I'm Jonathan Cronkite with Bringing Faith Home. Let's talk about family devotions. Talking a lot. Basically, the worst thing we should do in leading family devotions is to talk a lot. Our kids are in school. Most of our kids are in school six hours a day. They're in class. The last thing they need is another class, another sermon. They need something that engages them. They need to participate. They need to be involved and not just talked at. They don't need another lecture. Take a look at this homemade video. All right, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Okay. Salt. I mean, can you imagine being in a salt-free world, no salt to put on food? I mean, what does salt do? I mean, salt, you know, back in Jesus' time, it prevents decay, you know, and then it also adds flavor to certain food, right? I mean, think of people who were salty, the Bible who were salty. Noah, Noah was salty, built an ark, built an ark, and no one even, you know, knew what he was doing. I'm not sure Noah knew what he was doing, but he obeyed God. He was salt. To the people around him. I mean, who else? Who else was salty? I mean, think of Job. Job was salty. I mean, even his friends were saying, what did you do wrong? But he stood firm, and he was salt to the people around him. I mean, can you think of anybody? Joseph. Joseph was salt. Salt, he could have married. And, and then there was David. I mean, David was salt. I mean, he wrote I mean, almost all the book of Psalms, he was salt, and he had a great friend, Jonathan, and he was salt, and they were salt together. I mean, there are just tons of people in the Bible, and then, the, and then there's your great, great grandmother, and she was salt, too. I know you guys don't remember her, but she was salt. When we do all the talking, we're not involving them. When we don't involve them, we don't know what's going on inside of them. We don't know what they're thinking. We don't know their heart. I mean, basically, if we don't ask them what they're thinking, it's like telling them we don't care what they think. We, it's like telling them, you know, your opinion doesn't matter. So the best thing we can do is engage our kids in conversation, in a discussion. I mean, and, and the great thing about that is when we do that, we show them that we care. We show them that we care about their opinions and their thoughts. It reveals their heart and what they're really thinking. You know, I mean, for all we know, they're thinking about what's next on their agenda or, you know, or the, the social networking that they need to do as soon as they're done with our devotion. But it really involves them and they'll feel part of the discussion. And when they are discussing and sharing their insights uh, into God's Word, they understand that this is a family thing, and not just an individual thing, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Your family will show no mercy if devotion goes on and on and on. And getting them to come to devotion will be a real challenge. All right, kids, it's time for devotion.
So how do we get our kids to participate in family devotions? Well, one thing is, of course, to let them talk. If they've got questions, you know, that's a great teachable moment with whatever question they have. And, you know, and never say no or put them down or, you know, let them participate. And guys, I know I've got a 5, 7, 9, 11, and the younger ones can, you know, get off topic and they can ask random questions. But you want it to be a place where they feel safe to ask questions. And, uh, and so, you know, give some answers and move on. But let them participate as much as possible. If your kids are old enough, uh, you know, to read, then you could actually either take turns, uh, everybody read, you know, one of these questions if you're using a resource of some kind, uh, or you could even let your kids or teenagers, you know, pick the next devotion and let them lead it. Um, when, when we uh, answer their questions, we are definitely modeling for them. Um, what it means to learn and to teach and to, to grow as well. So if they're leading a devotion and they're asking those questions, um, when we share our hearts, when we share new insights, they're really realizing that we're growing all at the same time. Uh, the other thing is to be creative. Uh, devotions doesn't always have to happen around the couch. They don't always happen, have to happen, you know, at dinner time. Y'all could be out, you know, at the local ice cream place. Y'all get an ice cream and, you know, bring your devotion and have it there. Uh, you could be in the car if you don't have time one certain day or week. You know, you can even do it in the car on vacation. Uh, and then there are all kinds of ideas that you can find on this website and other websites to give you creative ideas. And so if you search those out, I guarantee you'll get some great tips and your kids will want to be involved in family devotions. Now again, I told you my kids are uh, 5, 7, 9, and 11, and they love the time that we have for family devotions. I mean, they actually fight over who gets to sit, you know, next to Daddy and snuggle with Daddy during family time. So guys, it's a precious time. And while your kids are still young, definitely, definitely take advantage of it. So blessings to you, and uh, we'll see you next time. Please comment. Let me, know, uh, let me know what you think. Let me know your feedback. Let's encourage one another in this journey of bringing faith home.